The problem with early stage is the risk is enormous, the failure rate is very high, and the returns take a long, long time to, to eventuate. We have focused on later stage because it de-risks it if you have, uh, have achieved a lot earlier on, and it also means that you can return earlier because the portfolio companies will reach their exit point quicker than an early stage company. And the, the, our definition of, early, uh, of later stage is that, um, because there is no one definition, and, and this is just the Horizon 3 biotech definition, is we will invest in a company that we believe has only one or two milestones to achieve over a three to four, maybe five year period and can deliver a 1x per annum of uh, investment uh, and, and reach an exit point where we're confident we can uh, trade sale or, or have an, um, an exit on market. As you might imagine, uh, fund managers are pitched a lot, of, a lot of investment opportunities. Our team is on track to in, uh, review around 500 per annum. There is no way we can do full due diligence on all 500 and manage our portfolio companies. So we have to try and pick holes, fail fast, each, each company that we look at. So uh, your audience will, will, a lot of you will be aware of the uh, Trojan Prince Paris who uh, killed Achilles, the, the great warrior, by shooting an arrow into his heel, uh, the back of his heel. Now he knew where uh, Achilles' weak spot was. In our case, we have to try and identify where the weak spot of each portfolio company is. And so we try to identify that as quickly as possible and move on. If we can't identify it very quickly, then we start doing uh, in serious uh, initial due diligence. And so that 500 might become 80. And so we will do thorough due diligence on 80. The first, first example I'll give you is valuation. If we're looking at a company and they feel that they have one or two milestones to achieve over a four year period before it will be attractive as, as an exit, if they've got a pre-money valuation of $100 million, then we have to look at comparables, uh, what the, what the uh, interest in that technology is in the market, uh, DCF analysis, and if we can't see that it's going to deliver us, potentially deliver us a four times, because of four years, four times our initial investment, then we have to leave it alone. So if it's pie in the sky number that would, that would reach, uh, we just leave it alone. The valuation's too high. Another example is uh, a little bit similar. A company might present uh, a, a very cogent investment argument with one or two milestones. In our initial due diligence, we might say, hang on, those, those two milestones are fine, but in our experience, there are a couple of extra milestones you need to achieve prior, um, before a regulatory body would look at it and take it serious, or, or a, a, a company would want to acquire it. So we would have to dec um, decline that investment and say, you need to hit these couple of milestones first uh, before we would invest, and then you can hit the last couple. The last example I'll give you is on the positive side for a change. Um, we might look at a company and, and, and identify three areas that we think are a potential concern. For instance, mechanism of action of, of the drug. Uh, we might look at intellectual property. Uh, another one we might look at is manufacturing. You know, the problem with manufacturing is uh, quite often a, a product produced in a lab and used at small scale achieves very interesting clinical results in, in tens or hundreds of patients. But when you try to scale up that manufacturing of that ingredient, uh, it's, uh, you cannot get the same efficacy. And so that is, um, unfortunately, that has happened many, many times over the, the decades that I've been involved. And so we need to try and work out whether there is a manufacturing mechanism to scale up now, if all three of those things uh, are positive in our review, then we will proceed on to initial due diligence.